God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please have a seat. It's great to be together this morning. And uh, on the 12th Sunday after Pentecost, they call this ordinary time. Many times we have a season of Lent, we have a season of Advent, we have a season of Easter, and um, the season of Pentecost they call ordinary time. And I thought that was just so interesting that this season of Pentecost where we celebrate the Spirit leading us and guiding us is ordinary time. It's ordinary time. It's what life should be to be led by the Spirit. And so today in our reading in Ephesians, in the epistle, we're looking at soaking in wisdom. So if you'd like to look into your, in your Bibles, I invite you to turn to page 1,193. It's a little tough to find sometimes. You know, there's four, there's four short epistles right in a row, and I, I always remember them as... General Electric Power Con Co Company, Galatians, Philippians, Colossians, and Ephesians. So, number 1,193, if you'd like to follow along, we're reading through this book of Ephesians, and we have a seven-part sermon series on soaking. Summer soak, we call it, and we're soaking in the love of God. We're soaking in the presence of God. And... It's sort of like, you know, soaking in a jacuzzi. You just let it permeate into your body. You let it permeate into your soul. We want, we want God's love to just permeate and soak into us. And so we've been looking at this book of Ephesians, and Paul is writing from the prison in Rome, to his beloved mentors, those he has shared the gospel with over in modern-day Turkey, also called Ephesus, and he's writing them. And he's writing them not only about doctrine and theology, but he's writing them about practical life. How do we live this Christian life? Because they're not fifth-generation fifth Christians. They're brand-new believers. They've, they, some of them still worship the goddess of Diana. And so they, they're making this transition from worshiping the Greek gods to the Christian god. And so what is Paul Writing, What is he telling, what is he encouraging the people in Ephesus to do, and, and how does that apply to our lives today, right now, in our situation? So, we look at today's, and it's on 1,193. We're in the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verses 15 through 20. Very short, only five verses and the first verse, a warning. Be careful. Be careful then how you live. Not as unwise, but as wise. Making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Okay. We've got this divine tension. We've got this living the life in the spirit, and yet the days are evil. And so it's this divine tension of wanting to do what's right. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So Paul is saying, soak in wisdom. Soak in God's truth. Soak in God's word. And be careful then how you live. Not as unwise, but as wise. Because the days are evil. You know, we have temptations in the world, don't we? And we have this, what I call this white noise in the background. 
sort of just confusing us and, and trying to steer us off course. Or, or maybe it's like the little white dog that naps, nips at your ankles, just sort of irritating you. And, you know, the, the evil one is, is not to be feared because it really has no power. It's a little one. It's a really little one. It's like that yapping white dog. Irritating. But Jesus Christ is the big one. He's the big I am. He's the one that gives us power and love and self-control and sound mind. He's the one that allows us to live wise. So yes, we've got this divine tension. We've got the ways of the world. It's not an easy place out there behind these doors. This is our sanctuary. This is where we come to, re to remain si solid so that we're not like the infants. And a few weeks ago, I think it was, I think it was to the 10 o'clock, that I had mentioned that I had gone to the beach and saw this mom and she was holding her daughter's hand as she was had the floaties on the on her as she was in the ocean and and she was floating on the top right where the waves broke and she would she would come in and she would co come in with the wind the waves and then out with the waves and her mom's hand was going all the way back and all the way forward she was an infant and her mom stood there and said, her mom's arm was being pulled out, and her mom said, put your feet down. And the little girl's looking up at her mom, and her mom's saying, put your feet down. So that we aren't as infants being pulled back and forth as the waves. Because the world is going to misguide us. And we need to know the truth because the truth will set us free. And so Paul is in, in, encouraging those Christians in Ephesus. He is, he is on his knees for them. He is praying for them. He is soaking them in prayer and he's encouraging them to soak one another in prayer. He's encouraging them to soak in unity, like we've been talking about, to soak in kindness, to soak in the light. And so be careful then, he warns. Be careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity. And don't be foolish but understand what the will of the Lord is. Now we've been looking, this, this, these last six weeks, we've been looking at Ephesians. And what have we be, been learning? We've been learning that we're to be imitators. Imitators of God. To live a life of love. And also we've learned that who's called? Who's called? Raise your hand if you're called. Thank you. Thank you. Every hand goes up because we're all called. We all have a calling because we've all been given a gift. Not just the other person, but all of us, each one of us, in a different way. And we've all been called to uni unity. And so we've been called to use our gifts to the glory of God, to live a life worthy of our calling by God's grace and to live in this unity of the Spirit and to speak the truth in love. And so let's go to verse 19, Ephesians 5, verse 19. How do we speak to one another? Speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord. Always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
Now let me ask you, this morning when you came in, and after you heard the music, did it uplift your soul? It did mine. Made me want to dance. It was beautiful. That's what music is to do, to uplift our souls. When we have what I call an Eeyore day or an Eeyore season of life and we're a little down or depressed or it seems really dark outside, it lifts us. And that's what, that's what Paul is urging the people in Ephesus to do, the Christians, to bless one another and to speak a blessing to one another. Speak and, and, and not to curse and not to condemn but to uplift one another. So we have a warning. Be careful then how you live. And we also have a command. We have a strong suggestion. We have a tip for life. Be filled with the Spirit. Don't get drunk on wine, but be filled with the Spirit. I don't think it means don't have a glass of wine, but I think it means don't be overcome by that, but rather be led by the Spirit. Let God guide, lead, protect, because the Spirit brings us joy. The Spirit brings us power for service. The, the, the Spirit gives us inspiration for a witness. We all have a story. You hear mine often, and people want to hear yours because each one of us has a story, and the Spirit leads us in truth and wisdom. So we have a warning to be careful how we live, and we also have a command to be filled with the Spirit. And then we have an action. In... In Madagascar, we would teach the people about the Holy Spirit, and we would teach them about going to the tap. Well, sometimes this would work, the faucet. Sometimes this would work in Madagascar, and sometimes it wouldn't work because water was not guaranteed in Madagascar. But it works here, right? So, what happens if you go to the kitchen sink or to the bathroom sink? You go up and, well, now they even have it so that you can just put your hands under the water, right? And it, and it comes. And so, it's up to us. The action is ours. We've got the warning, be careful. We've got the command, live as wise people, soak in wisdom. And then we have the action. It's up to us to go. And so we go to the tap. We go to the faucet. And we either turn it on manually, or if you've got one of those fancy gadgets, you just put your hands underneath. And you let it flow. Because it's there. And that's like with the Spirit of God. It's there. God wants to send it. That's his will. Understand what the will of the Lord is. Put your hands under the faucet. Let it flow. Soak in it. Invite it. Because the Spirit needs to be invited. Come Holy Spirit. So turn the tap on. Put your hands underneath it and let it flow. So we've got a very practical theology here that Paul is giving the people in Ephesus. And not only Paul giving to the people in modern-day Turkey, but you and I as well. Be careful then how you live. Not as un unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity. Amen? Amen.
in the name of God the Father, 